We're going to demonstrate how a grantee might use GIS data to make planning decisions about preserving housing affordability. And we're going to do that using CPD Maps, which is here on HUD's eGIS portal splash screen. Open the application. And the first thing you see is this Guide Me wizard that helps you find the area that you're interested in. So we're going to pretend we're the city of Washington, D.C. and that we're the CDBG grantee. And the first thing you get here is the outline of Washington, D.C.'s CDBG service area, and you actually get a sense of the funding that they got in the last program year for the four formula block grants that are part of the consolidated plan. So one of the things that our city here, Washington, D.C., wants to know is where can it target its funding to preserve housing affordability? So the first thing they might want to do is see how have rents changed over time. And here in the map selection tool, we have a lot of data that can help understand the housing market. And one of them is the change in median rent. So this outlines or codes census tracts according to how the rent has changed over time. And this dark orange is where rents have gone up but the most, and you see it's pretty much half the city has seen a rental increase of greater than 23%. That doesn't really help us to make a targeting decision, so I'm going to try and see where people live who might benefit from HUD funding. So this layer here, it's an outline layer, and it shows us which census tracts are more than 50% lower moderate income, which is 80% of area median income or below. So there's a lot of census tracts that have both high increase in rent high percentage of lower moderate income households, not very, still not very useful for understanding how we could target our funds. So I'm going to now move on to looking a little deeper and using this map query tool that allows you to set criteria and the tool itself will find geographies that meet your criteria. So the first thing you have to do is tell it where you want to look. It's going to look either within the country or within the grantee jurisdiction that we chose. And we're going to have it look for tracts. And these are the variables that, um, or this is a menu that gets you to the variables that we can um, query on. And I'm going to start looking under housing supply, characteristics of housing stock, and housing affordability. And I'm looking for, I want to look for tracts where housing is currently affordable. And I'm going to look for tracts where the percentage of renter units affordable to this 50% of area median income is high. And so right now I'm going to look and see how many census tracts where at least 50% of the renter units in that tract are affordable to that income level. And you see now there's 66 out of 178 tracts in Washington, D.C. that meet that criteria. That's still a lot. Spreading funding across 66 tracts wouldn't really get us anywhere. So I'm going to tighten up that criteria and see where that gets me. Now I can see there's nine census tracts within the city of Washington, D.C., where 70% or more of the renter units are affordable to households at 50% of area median income. That's a pretty narrow number. So when I click Finish, it gives me a list of the tracts that meet my criteria, and it also shows me where these are on the map. So now I can see that we've got two census tracts here where not only are they 50% or more low moderate income and where they're in the highest range where rents have changed the most over time, but they're also places where housing, a large percentage of housing is currently affordable to households at 50% of AMI. And that might be a good place to target a preservation program. So you can see how now we've got a couple of areas where it would be a good place to target funding where lower income households can currently afford their housing, but there's been a sharp increase in rents over the last 10 years. So this might keep them from being displaced from increased housing costs.